Okay, well, it's a round soil blocker, so obviously it's inefficient. Put a few seeds in the ground and we'll see what happens. Then it's worth it for me to look into investing in a better seed blocker. My little pepper plants are looking so good. Welcome to the garden today. Uh, if you're new here, I'm Catherine, the Arrow Garden Homesteader, and today I thought I would try an experiment. I'm going to put some seeds in the ground. Yes, it's the beginning of February. It's actually about almost the middle of February. But I'm going to put in some beets, some rutabaga, and there's a couple more packages here. I hate wearing gloves, oh my gosh. I've got a cabbage, and what's the last one? Oh yeah, a broccoli. So there's the broccoli. So in this bed, I am thinking I'm going to peel back the mesh and I'm just going to put in this sort of front half, I'm going to put in a bit of broccoli, not broccoli, sorry. I'm going to put in some um, beets and on the second half, I'm going to put in the uh, rutabaga. Uh, I think some people call it Swede. I don't know, uh, it looks like that. It's not a turnip, it's different. Um, I. I'm trying to experiment. So a lot of people do winter sowing. I am going to try doing winter sowing directly in the ground. We're expecting some precipitation actually over the next... Supposedly we're getting precipitation over the next week. So I thought, okay, well this way the ground will get some water if it happens. If not, I do have some water totes. I can just water this section. And then I'm going to put in the broccoli and cabbage on the other bed, and I'm going to probably do the same thing where I'll divide it up a little bit and put them on the ends. So I'll just put them on this way versus the beets, the roots, vegetables are gonna go this way. And this way I can still use the beds for what I want to do because I think there will be a little overlap between when I put my tomato seedlings in and when I put my other, you know, whatever else I'm gonna plant in here. So. I'm just going to, this is just lightly put on here, and the, this is the, I don't know if you can see this, so this is the the garlic. I think what happened was it did actually sprout, so you can see how there's two plants here. So I think that they did sprout and divide when I did that cold uh, vern vernalization in the spring last year. So some of them grew a little and did divide a little, and so now I've got more plants growing in the same spot. So I don't know what that's going to mean for anything, but guess we'll find out. So I'm gonna get you set up. Don't know if you're gonna be able to see everything. I might have to like raise you up. There are dogs barking, there's traffic going on. I got a sick chicken behind me, so she's gonna be uh, joining in on the noise. But yeah, I'm just gonna basically uh, put a few seeds in the ground and we'll see what happens. Um, my parsley is actually still green, oddly enough. Go figure. Inches. Okay, so I'm going to actually make a little hole and I'm going to plant like three seeds in each hole, but I am going to follow the guidelines for the spacing. I'm going to give them lots of space. I don't need a ton of beets, so it kind of doesn't matter. It would be nice if I can show you guys some pickled beets. Now my seeds are a little bit older, so I don't know how well they will sprout, but I'm going to put about three in each hole. And that's that. And we will just... Uh, monitor the situation and see how that does in spring. So that's pretty much it. I don't know how much of that you saw because it was kind of wrong angle, but that's it. I'm going to just go around and do that to all the other beds. And then I was thinking I'm going to try to do some soil blocking today. And if nothing else, I got to start my tomatoes. So whether I soil block or not, those are getting started. All right, welcome to my potting table. Got the seeds in the ground. So I am going to try to make the soil. I'm just going to use one of these dish pans to mix the soil up in. And then I've just got one of these little things. It's Fisker. You know what? If it works and I like it, I will get something more efficient. So I, I am going to start with, this is going to be my measuring cup. So this is going to be considered one part. So I need one part compost. Use whatever compost you have. I have steer manure mix, so we're going with it. Okay, so one part. I'd open my bag. Okay, I'm gonna get two parts topsoil, two parts of that. I need two parts perlite, so I have some of that actually. Surprisingly, I could not find my um, fertilizer. I was gonna mix in just a small amount of fertilizer because I don't have any of the other ingredients that were on the list that were actually fertilizing ingredients. So, uh, yeah, we're just gonna go with it. So I need two parts of that. I will just fertilize as I water. That'll probably just, it'll work just as well. And I need three parts of, um, I 
goodness, that's loud. Peat moss. Three parts peat. So that's going to be your bare bones recipe. From there, you can add in like green soil, green sand, and various other things. I will link the recipe below that I am sort of following, but use what you have. Okay, that is the So we're going to mix this up really well. I'm going to try to break down. I've got chunks of peat moss in here. I'm going to break them down as much as I can. Then I'm probably going to try to pass everything through a screen if I feel like I still have chunks. Then we can hydrate it. I feel like that's got way too much perlite in it. Check the recipe. Yeah, calls for perlite. Very right, well. I'm going to put in a little bit more compost and topsoil. I do want this to hold together. Okay. Okay, well, slightly better. Okay, so we made this for the chickens, so everything you make comes in handy in another way. I'm just going to pass it through real quick. Just running my hand over it. In case you're wondering, it's just quarter inch hardware cloth in a frame of just some cedar wood we had laying around. And uh, some pine on top. Some of these are actually chunks of the peat moss because it was pretty dry and just it's been sitting a while and it's pretty chunky. But some of this is actually wood from the topsoil and compost. Okay, so the next step is to mix three parts of my mix with one part of water. I suspect I'm going to need more than one part of water because some of this stuff is super dry. So let's give it a try. That's that. It does say to use warm water. I don't have warm water with me out here. I just have the cold water that was in the totes, so we're just going with it. I think the point is, if you use warm water, you probably kill the eggs of the fungus gnat, which has always been my problem. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this together. It needs to hold up without being, so when I squeeze it, if I get a couple of drips, I'm okay, but if I'm just getting water pouring out, I'm not okay. So let's get this. Well mixed. So I'm getting quite a bit of water coming out. There we go, it's absorbing it. I'm not getting quite so much. Let's see, how does it hold together? So it's holding together pretty good. My concern is how well will this hold together over time. So, a tray. So I actually found some of these at the store. They're the fairy moss seed trays. But they're sturdier than their, their little seed starter trays. So I hope that will work. So, I need to load it up. Okay, it says load it until water presses out of the... I don't see water pressing out. That's, uh, that's pretty confident. Let's go with it. Well, I mean, it's holding up for now. I guess we'll see. Okay, well, I'm just going to start filling these. I am probably going to do a bunch of seed blocks to, like the soil blocks, to see how tomatoes and stuff do in that. Then I'll do some conventionally, just in little, you know, plastic ones. And then I will also do some in the seed starting trays in the arrow gardens, just to see, you know, what works best. So, or at least what works best for me. Okay, well the water is squeezing out the bottom, not really the holes. I get the feeling I'm not going to be able to fit three of these across. I wonder, can I move them? Haha, I can move them. Okay, well they're delicate, but movable. Okay, let me get this done. At least one tray. See how painful this is. Okay, well, it's a round soil blocker, so obviously it's inefficient, but it's good for testing it out. I got 50 in here. I had 52, but it seemed like such an odd number, so I'm just, I took two out, and now I have 50. And it's just a matter of dropping in one seed per, per hole. So I am just going to get on with it. Uh, I don't remember if I put one in there. I will get these in the house. Probably won't put the lights on right away. It's going to take me a few, probably going to take me a few days honestly to get those unpacked and then hung back up again and all plugged in properly and it's just a pain because I got to make sure they're plugged into the timer. But anyways, they will be under lights as soon as I can on a timer and then, um, so according to the instructions, which you know how well the internet works on those, but it is they don't require water for at least two or three days, but after that, when the block starts getting a little dry, they should be misted. So it is not a bottom water like traditional 
you know, little pots. So we will sort this out. I will get it to work. I do have a mister. We'll see how it works. I'm, I'm fingers crossed because I don't want to have to waste all these seeds to find out I mixed it wrong or I didn't do it right. But we'll see. It's all experimenting and learning. So these are all the seeds I started yesterday. I started some in these regular little four inch pots. I have the ones that I did the soil blocking for. And then, this, I hate to say it, the regular pots are easier to fill so I did do a lot of those. Um, the soil blocking is more to see how it works. And then I started up all the seed trays I had plus three regular bounties. I thought I had seed trays for bounties, but I don't. So if you do the cotton balls in the seed trays, it's really important to make sure you overfill the reservoir to make sure it's touching the sponge or the um, cotton ball. So it's not something I mentioned when I did the farm because it was kind of hard to... I was sort of figuring that out on my own, but I did figure that out. You do have to overfill the reservoir for a while until roots start coming down and the sponges, you know, are staying wet on their own. So here we are. I've got... So I've got just basically Rio Grandes and Romas right now. So I have some down here as well. And this is all the... I'll probably start up one more flat of tomatoes, but those will be like um, cherry tomatoes, beef steaks, just sort of the ones I only need a few of. The Romas and the Rio Grandes, those actually sell really well for me, so it's worth it for me to start up a whole bunch of extra ones. But yeah, this is the start. They all were started on the same day, so I want to see... You know, it's not just going to be a matter of which one comes up first. It's going to be which one's stronger, which which is easier to do. Now, obviously, the seed blocking is not easy to do if I'm working with something that's round. It's also not that efficient because they're round. But if it works well and I get good seedlings out of it and they're easy to move into, you know, sort of these bigger pots or whatever, then it's worth it for me to look into investing in a better seed blocker. That's really what it comes down to. And so far everything, so these ones are starting to look just a little dry on the edges, you know, on the edges here, but I think they'll be okay for another day at least. And then, and then I need to start watering things. And here is how everything upstairs is doing. So the celery looks like it's doing really well. I do still have some of the ones on the outside or some of them feel solid and some of them feel more hollow. So this one's a hollow one. This one actually feels quite solid. So I'm hoping that the ones, the ones inside are feeling more solid, so I'm hoping that having upgraded them to a reservoir with more water will help improve the solidity of the stalks. So, and I do still have some of the tip burn in there, that's just not going to go away, but I will be making new plant food today and hopefully getting back to that master blend will help them better than, I don't think they like the nutrients from Arrow Garden, so. My little pepper plants are looking so good. I am so proud of this. So I don't know what my germination rate was. I think there are still some in here that, some in the back there that I don't think have sprouted yet, but did say it could take some time. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of at that point where they should have done it. And I think some of them are just struggling to deal with the, um, the I don't know if I put them in wrong, but they're, they're just like pushing out in the wrong direction. So. I might need to help a couple of them. Then over here, I have the bell peppers. Looks like I got a couple of them going on, so that's pretty good. And then, oops, plants in the way. And over here, I get some Anaheims that look like they are starting to pop up. So that is pretty good. So I'm happy with that. I got the basically the lemon tree is in the way. So these are the little seedlings. I've got the tomato seedlings downstairs. If you want to see what uh, happens with these, make sure you're subscribed. I will be following along on their journey through the season. So if you're not already subscribed, you might want to do that just so that you can stay informed of these updates on how these little seedlings are doing, how they end up transplanting, and how they grow in the garden. And finally, over here, I brought the cilantro upstairs so I could make room downstairs for the seedlings. Uh, obviously, it needs to be fed too. I have not fed. I actually skipped feeding last week because didn't want to use the Arrow Garden nutrients again, and it seemed like things just weren't doing very well with it, no matter that I was using half doses or what. So then this actually looks really good. So it's supposed to have four teaspoons. I did three last time and I found it was really just way too dense. This time I did two teaspoons and I feel like it's got a better, it's just more open and I feel like there's a bit better airflow through there. It doesn't feel like it's quite so wet 
down inside. It's got a little bit of dampness, but it's not like just soaking wet. Some of the denser areas are a little more wet, but no, this looks really good. So this is pretty much ready for me to start harvesting. And I've got some salad greens in the fridge, so I'm going to start, I'm going to start pulling some out and uh, sticking them in my salad. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope you enjoyed me struggling to make some soil blocks with a uh, very inefficient soil blocker. Make sure you subscribe so you can stay tuned to see how those hold up because I'm I'm a little concerned. Uh, I've never done soil blocking before. I understand the concept of it, but I'm worried that they'll fall apart when I water them and, and try to, you know, manipulate them to a pot thing. So, yeah, if you want to stick around for the hilarity of that, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, I hope you found this video useful. I'll have some more videos up at the end that you might also enjoy, and I will see you next time on the Arrow Garden Homestead.